guys, don't even bother sitting down. Uh, we're gonna go down to the shop and we're gonna get some hands-on time with the machines. Nice. You need to be careful. The teacher said to make sure you have your safety glasses on and make sure you have no loose clothing or hair. Oh my god! Hey, you okay? Guess we should invest in a full body hairnet then, huh? No kitties, we're harmed during this video. B here is not Jackie Chan, she does not do all her own stunts. We called in the stunt cat. Hello and welcome back to the shop, and today's video is going to be the beginning of video that one, which is um, steady rest and follow rest, setup and usage. So it's going to be all about the rest um, on the lathe, how we use them, what we use them for, and some different things that they're useful for. Um, so uh, everybody's kind of been getting uh, rid of a nasty cold for the past couple weeks here. Uh, one of those lingering just stupid colds. The weather here has been kind of crazy. It's been going up in the 90s and dropping down in the 60s and pouring rain. It's been all over the place, up and down. We haven't had, really had a steady uh, week of heat uh, a lot yet. So, um, as we can have it with everybody, everybody's getting sick. All uh, respiratory crap. So, excuse me if I start hacking like an old man or if my voice goes out a little bit. Um, also, it was really hot down in the shop today. It's hot outside, plus down here. Uh, it's not an it, unconditioned space. I have a boiler on one side, and I have uh, dehumidifying on, so excuse if I start sweating to death. Plus, I'm drinking hot coffee, which, you know, doesn't really help, but I hate iced coffee. So, anyway, um, we're going to be looking at uh, steady rest usage and follower rest usage, and these are the salt bin accessories. This one here, this um, steady rest has been modified a little bit and we'll go over it on the desk and this is the uh, follower rest now um, For a lathe this size with as small a through hole as it has which is only three quarters of an inch um, This is a very worthwhile accessory to invest in uh, this will allow you to work on larger work uh, Away from the chuck and that's basically what a steady rest does um, It'll allow you to work on anything that you can't fit through the spindle that has a long stick out or anything that you have to work the end with that you can't have a center hole in it or you can't have all the centers in the way. Uh, this picture this as kind of like a mobile um, mobile center that you can put anywhere on your part and that'll give you the support that you need to do your machining operations. So for a lathe like this where you can't get anything over three quarters of an inch through the spindle and you're working on anything long, you're going to need something like this. Now this on the other hand um, very rarely used. I think I've had this for maybe two to three years. Uh, yeah, around probably around three, three years. Um, and I've never used it. And um, but I'll tell you, <laughs> when you do need it, you need it. And nothing else will um, will suffice. Now this bolts to the carriage and um, moves with the carriage, and this will allow you to work on thinner pots or anything you're worried about deflecting away from your tool bit, um, this will hold it in place and it follows your tool, hence follow a rest. Um, so we'll uh, show the usage of both of these tools on the lathe, but first I just want to kind of go on the bench here and get you going with the anatomy of how these work and some different ones that self been made. Um, these are called plain rests, there's also a thing called a um, uh, micrometer. Uh, one micrometer adjustable one. These are just plain steady rest and follow rest. So um, I'll show you a picture of that in a second. Well, let's get on the bench here. Okay, so first let's take a look at the follow rest. And as you can see, it's cocked off to uh, one side. And this basically bolts up to the side of the carriage. And this puts um, the, the, the rest here, the rest fingers, 
uh, roughly in line with your tool bit. Your tool bit will be on the front side of this and this will follow behind your tool bit. And uh, this will keep the part from deflecting away from your tool bit. Now, these are the way that these came. They had cast iron jaws. Um, you can get, uh, there's some people online I believe that are making, or you can make your own um, brass or, or bronze jaws for this, which is perfectly fine. Um, the cast iron works works well. Um, the only thing you have to worry about is just make sure it's, it's oiled. This is gonna be riding on the part. Now this is what they call a plane rest, where these fingers are just floating with a stop, and the only thing to adjust it is just this little uh, screw. Now they also have uh, micrometer ones, which um, if you watch Adam's channel or anything like that, that's what he has. Now those have uh, an actual micrometer knob that is super fine adjustment on it and will allow you to move the jaws in and out. Those are uh, a little bit better and more expensive um, and those will allow you to get a better feel of this jaw on the part. For us to use this um, easily or get the right tension on the jaws to the part, we'll be using a little bit of a feeler gauge to help uh, gauge so we're not rubbing directly on the part. Uh, and I'll show you that. Now this one on the other hand is the steady rest. Now you can see this clamp right here and this clamps underneath, it's a draw bolt just like your um, tailstock but the only difference is you can see it's really short and that is to allow you to fit in between the ways of the bed without having to slide this locking plate in from the back like the tailstock. So this can go anywhere on the bed and flip sideways and basically clamps down between the ways. Now these fingers have been modified, I actually made these um, completely. These are completely from scratch. And I did it on a mill. I did it on a, in a class that I took. Basically, I took the class specifically to make these and make a couple other things that um, I couldn't hear. Uh, basically, I, I, I took the class for uh, mill time. And what you have is a cam is a cam follower, cam roller right here. And that's in a jaw that's shaped the same as these. And that'll allow um, you to have a roller bearing action on the part instead of rubbing directly onto the uh, the part with the fingers themselves. And the only problem with that is this here is only, I believe it's three inches. Now, so you only, you only have a three inch diameter here. And this, with these cam rollers here, actually knocks that diameter down to uh, slightly over two inches. So that's the largest part that I can get in there. But, I can also take these cams out and run it on the fingers and get the full three inch diameter. So you see, you know, it's three pointed. You have two fingers that are relatively on the bottom, one directly on the top. And you also have a clamping screw that swings down and allows you to hinge the whole piece open. So you can do, um, multiple parts. You can remove the part, take this out without losing your setting, drop another part in, clamp it right back down, and you're still with your same setting. So you can do multiple parts or you can move this around multiple times if you need to. Um, so let's set up on the lathe and we'll show how to work these. Now like I said, this is usually for working uh, long and larger diameters, almost anything that you can't fit through the spindle hole. Um, that you need to machine the end of or anything that needs to stick out that you can't have a a, um, a center hole or your centers in the way um, think of this as a movable movable center that you can put anywhere on your part and it's just it, it's there for support you can also use it if you're working down the end of the line here say you have a part that's this that's this big or longer and you want to do some machining down here you have the the um, the center in here, but you're worried about the center deflecting a little bit, and you don't want to use the follower rest. You can clamp this in the center, and then th that makes this section more rigid. Basically, you need your part supported if you have more than um, two and a half to three times the diameter sticking out of the chuck. Um, you need some sort of support on the other end, whether it be a steady rest or a center. It needs to be supported, otherwise it's going to deflect away from you. And uh, that's what this is for. So we'll, let's go over to the lathe, we'll set this up, and we'll show you how to use it. Okay, we have a piece of uh, one inch aluminum in here. 
and these jaws here are loose as you can tell and we have this pushed close to the chuck and tightened down. Now the reason for that is we're going to uh, preliminary set our jaws over here so that way they, if this was a big part you may have some sag down here um, or, or something like that or even some run out will kind of screw yourself up a little bit so um, if you can get towards the chuck and do it uh, to, to preliminary set yourself um, it's a little bit easier to play with down the end once you get it down the end. So now you want these these jaws running on the truest diameter possible. We shouldn't have much of a problem with this because this is relatively smooth all the way around but what I might do is just take a piece of sand cloth and just knock down the highs where we're going to run the steady rest. If you have a piece that's really crunchy uh, like a hot rolled piece or something that's um, really really got a bunch of crud on the outside you can do a couple of things. You can use a cat's head which we'll get into later and I'll show you that um, or you can turn yourself down a true diameter section, you can do that in a multitude of ways. Um, if it's short like this and you're not worried about the end whipping around, you can turn your section down here at the chuck really quick and then just flip your piece around. Um, if it's something that you're worried about flopping around all over the place, obviously, I mean obviously if you turn down the section over here you have to make sure that you're going slow enough that you're not whipping this like a noodle. Um, if you're worried about something whipping around being dangerous like that really long, you can temporarily claim center by using just scribe lines and a, and a drill press and drill yourself a center in there, get your tailstock up, pop your center in, turn yourself a true diameter, and then put your um, steady rest on that true diameter and then reclaim your center or claim true center after that. There are many ways to be able to do that. Like I said, we're not going to have an issue with this. So what I'm going to do for right now is we're going to preliminary set these jaws and then I'll move it up a little bit here. I'll clean up a, a true diameter with a piece of sand cloth and then we'll run our steady rest right onto that. Um, if you had a micrometer stop, you, a micrometer rest, you would have micrometer heads up here that are really, really fine adjustment. Now we don't have that on this and we don't really want to, it's, it's, it's hard in this case on these plain rests it's hard to get a feel of how much pressure you're putting on the pot so what you can do is get yourself a 1000 feeler gauge or some cellophane off of like a cigarette pack or something like that that's about one to one and a half thousandths thick and you can just use it as a feeler gauge and get these in place until you feel a slight drag and then tighten down. So you know you're a little bit off but you're pretty damn close there. And same thing with these sides. At least you know you're not jamming the piece into those jaws. And you're just feeling for a slight drag, nothing, nothing major. And then lock them all in place. Now we're going to turn this and you can see we're touching on this wheel and we're hitting these a little bit. So now what we can do is just very slightly, these are snug, they're not completely tight, just give them a little bit of a turn in until I see that roller move all the time there so I know we're touching and same thing over here sorry about blocking the camera and same thing on the top Okay, so uh, these all three wheels, we zoom in here, you probably see those the best. You can see that they're moving, alright, and you can see if I just pinch it, I can stop it 
with my hand without very much force at all. Okay? So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo my top, undo my carriage lock, and we're going to slide close to where we're going to be. Now we want to claim center on this. But what I want to do first is make sure that I knock off all of the high spots on here. So tighten that down, tighten this down. All right, we're still touching all those rollers. What I'm going to do, let me give this to dry. Grab a piece of paper. Okay, so now we have a nice smooth spot there. And you could hear it as it turned around. You could hear it wasn't binding or anything which is we, what we want. We don't want to put enough, so much pressure on it that we actually pinch the part. Move it down to our cleaned up area here. going to put a little bit of oil right where that rides just so we don't gall anything even though there's not much pressure on there um, we won't want to do any damage to our part so we're going to spin it up now you can hear how much the, the difference in that in that sound you know getting the whoa, 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 whoa sound as it was hitting some of the rollers you have a nice smooth surface for it now you can do whatever machining you need to do on the end here. In our case, we're going to face that off and we're going to claim our center. Okay, so we got you in there and basically what we're going to do right now is we're going to claim center on this. So we're going to face it off, put a center drill in there, and then um, might do some turning on the outside just to show you it can be done.
Okay. So we have our center point in there. We can run our center up in there and we can actually remove the steady rest if we have to. Now, if for some reason we can't put a center hole in the end and can't claim center directly on that, um, we can use this as basically a movable chuck. So we can have our part sticking out two and a half times diameter from these jaws and still have still be able to call that supported. So if we had to work to the end of this bar uh, for whatever reason and we couldn't have that center hole in there, we still can. So to show you that we can still take the cut, put in here. I'm gonna go ahead with a touch. I'm gonna go ahead and take say a hundred thousandths off of here. And our uh, feed rate is gonna be five thousandths per revolution. You can see when I when I backed up, I didn't disengage the bit, and it didn't drag. So you didn't see that spiral mark on there. Um, so that that means that there was no deflection in this part away from us. We can. <clears throat> okay, so this is a cat's head, and basically it's just a tube that's turned concentric on the outside, and we have a set of four set screws here, and there are four here that we don't have on there yet. Um, basically what this is is just uh, an intermediary between whatever stock we want to turn in the steady rest and the steady rest itself. This will allow us to put something that's really um, the outside condition of it's really bad or it's not concentric or it's square. Okay, And you really want a four jaw chuck with this because any kind of um, run out is going to make this thing jiggle around like crazy. You kind of want to avoid that. So. I'm just going to center this up here. I'm going to get this in the four jaw. Let's eyeball close. My indicator. There's my low, there's my high, there's uh, 35, so half of that is 15, 16, 17 and a half, 17 and a half, zero my indicator there, and bring all my jaws to match. I'm going to remember we're a tube here so we can't go crazy with it. And 
we're not going to be spinning this. We just want to get this trued up so we can put it in our steady. So just by doing that, we're off by a thousandth. Okay, we're within a half there. Now, let me pull this off. Bring my steady rest up. Remove these. Okay, make sure that wherever we're going to be, we're going to be clearing all those screws and we're just going to bring our feet here just in the touch. Okay, that looks and feels good. So loosen up. Loosen up our jaws. And there's our pot. There's our cat's head, so We'll put all our screws back in here. We'll get our square piece and our chuck. Okay, so now we'll just slide this out of our way for the time being. And we'll indicate the square stock in. So wiggle around till you see it stop in reverse direction which is right there so now we know we're in the middle of that bar we can set zero and we'll compare it to the opposite side so we're minus so we'll take half of that Go to the next one over, do the same thing. So there's where we reverse direction, go directly opposite that. And there's where we reverse direction.
Okay, check the next. Reverse direction right there. You can see now we're getting really close. We reverse direction right on that zero. Go to the next section. A little bit off. There could be a little bit of a difference in this bar. It's a possibility. We're off just a hair there. So minus. We're going to take half of that again. Zero, 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 one. So that's pretty close. So we're at about a thousand together. There could be a little bit of variance in the in the bar, but that's good enough for what we're doing. So now what we'll do is bring our bar back here, our cat's head, and we're gonna lightly clamp. Our set screws in place. I'm going to spin it and feel that we don't have any jumping. And then we're just going to leave those loose or loosen them up if we need to, just a hair. And we can slide this down the end. So I'll meet you down the other side. Okay, we're down the other end and I just cinched these down by a quarter of a turn. And we're going to do it just like we did the four jaw. Okay, so we got a part in place and we have that all dialed in off of this end. Now, as you tighten in these screws, there is a possibility that you may have um, tweaked this collar off a little bit. You can use these rear screws and an indicator to get everything squared up again, which I had. I moved off by about five thousandths of an inch. So I just tweaked these a little bit with an indicator and we got it to run nice and true again. So now we can do whatever we need to do. We can come back, come here, and come in this side here. We can go in here, give ourselves a nice face cut. Some nice center. Now we can come in, run our center in there, and then we can remove our cat's head. And as you can see, the only thing I did to it was burnish a shiny spot. There's no, uh, my, my fingernail doesn't catch an edge or anything right here. Um, everything's just like it was before when we're using it with a piece of round stock. So um, if you're doing a lot of square stuff, a long square stuff, this is definitely worth uh, making. It's very easy to make. Um, and like I said, I had a I have a video of it, which you can uh, look down below in the comments and see how I made this. Now I made this without, without a mill. Um, so that was a little bit more difficult uh, getting these perfectly 90 degrees apart, but I had a way of doing it, so. Um,
that's it. So right now we're going to put the three jaw back in and we're going to set up on a follower rest and see how that works. Okay. Now, one problem with these is your quick change tool post here. You can see how far away it is at its normal extension. These were for these salt bends at least, were more or less made to use with the lantern tool post that you can slide really close to that. Um, maybe we'll break mine out. Okay, so I got the lantern in here and you can see now that I got that in there that I can line this up just in front of those jaws. Actually, it needs to go slightly more in front of those jaws. So I'm in front of the jaws, but <clears throat> I'm pretty close to them. I'm maybe a little less than a quarter of an inch away from those jaws there. Okay, so now it's called a follow arrest because basically all you, it's counteracting your tool pressure forward. Now the problem is, as we reduce the diameter, this will be floating in air. So we actually have to cut a spot first for these jaws to ride, and then we have to adjust the, stead the follower rest to that spot and continue our cut. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so we'll get you guys in that neighborhood somewhere. So we speed up the lathe here. And as you can tell, my jaws are completely off the work, not touching anything. And what we're going to do is we're going to reduce this diameter. And we'll reduce it by, say, 50,000. Reduce that diameter for a length of longer than the jaws are wide. Okay, that's good there. I'm going to shut the lathe off, and without touching our setting for our tool bit, we're going to bring these jaws in to touch. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit you. Alright, so now our cut is backed up by this steady rest. So let me bring you back up above this and we're going to continue that cut all the way across and we're going to see if this deflects any. So biggest thing here is we want cutting oil. We need some sort of lubrication on those jaws as it comes across. So you need to keep everything well lubed. We're just going to continue our cut.
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to mic here and we're going to mic here and see if there's a difference. So I'm going to grab a one inch mic. Okay, so we're going to mic it here and there and at the very other end. So. Four hundred and fifty three, so it's four hundred and fifty three. You can see that and uh we'll call that eight tenths. Four hundred and fifty three and five tenths. So a little bit smaller in the middle, but not by much at all. And then let me check this end. Four hundred fifty three and five tenths, four hundred fifty three and yeah, as well seven tenths. So I mean, I, I th this lathe has a natural taper to it from wear, um, but you can see we're pretty consistent down the line, all because of this um, backer here, this step. Um, follow arrest. Now if you wanted to go again to start your cut again, let me move you back over here. Or I mean okay so we want to start our cut again so what I'm gonna do is back these off just so I can get above the uh, center rest. I mean us uh, above the center, the tailstock center, just so I'm not running into it. back here, take our next cut, cut for a length longer than the jaws are wide, come back in here, Touch there. Touch there and start that cut all over again. Now, where these shine the most, where these work the, the best, um, is obviously doing long parts like this. But if you were to, um, for threading, uh, threading long pieces, if you, for whatever reason, were making a piece of threaded rod of some sort, didn't have a die head, um, these work great for anything that you're afraid that's going to deflect. They're awesome for making things like lead screws uh, and feed screws for these lathes, because when you're doing the Acme threading, you're putting a lot of pressure on that part, and they tend to deflect away. And usually they're only, especially with the feed screws here, they're only 3 8 um, Rod, they're only three eighths thick, so there could be a lot of deflection in that. Using this this steady rest here will allow you to counteract that very easily. And um, what you do is once you got have your threading diameter, you just set your jaws and you leave them alone and let them run at that that spot across the bar all the time, because you're not actually taking any. Um, meat off of the diameter when you're threading, you're only making a groove, so you don't have to touch these. Uh, they work really well for that. Things like lead screws, any any kind of long thread on a thin pot, they work amazing on that. Like I said, not a piece of equipment that you're going to be using all the time, um, but when you do need it, you know, it's extremely handy. Now, I've seen uh, people have been able to kind of cobble up a version uh, of this off of um, their 
um, tool posts by using these screws here. Um, also on these, for whatever reason, I don't know why, there's a threaded part here. Um, I've seen people use all kinds of different uh, things or tool holders, pieces in the, in the tool holder using these screws or even a, a piece up here to kind of just reach over and grab and back the cut. Um, anything that would st will stop this, uh, this piece from bending away from you will work. Like I said, this is um, the original salt bend equipment, but uh, it, something can definitely be cobbled together. You just want to back your cut. Um, so that's it for for this video. Oh, and you could also you also saw um, how much closer to these jaws I could get the lantern two post as compared to the uh, quick change allure style two posts. Those go way far in front here, which you want to be as close to these jaws as you can. Um, so that's another reason why if you have a lantern two post, don't throw it away. Um, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. And um, probably middle of next week or some of, at some point, I'll get the choice for the next beginner videos up, um, which will obviously include thread measurement and something else. I don't know yet. Um, so we'll see you on that video, and you guys can vote. See you later.